Hello, our our fearless leader is here. Oh, uh, fearless leader. Yes. So we need her. Yes. We need her in our life. So um, I'm. We're gonna share this microphone. We'll let you start it. Is that okay? Yeah, Are you that's fine. Ready to go. It's warm in here. It is warm in here. Hello, this panel is entitled Women in Anime. We are women and we are in anime. Yay! Yay. Girl power. There may be, this may feel like a very estrogen charged panel and it should. So <laughs> that's the point of it. Um, pretty much, it's kind of like an open forum QA style and you can, it's more of a discussion though. It's not just like you ask us stuff and we throw it out at you. But. Uh, as you think of questions, remember what the title of the panel is. So it could be anything. It could be our experiences as actresses in the industry. It can be um, just talking about cool female characters that we've played, or even male characters, because that's what's cool about being a girl in this job. We can play the boys, uh, too. So um, you can ask us serious stuff. Uh, you might get some serious answers. Language might be involved in said answers, just because. Be advised. I'm not saying that I'm going to, I'm just, I don't want anybody to be like, Caitlin said, damn it, and then they leave or something. Um, you know, or, I mean, there's some pretty heavy stuff that we have to deal with, some heavy themes and, uh, and certain animes, so I just want us to be able to speak freely about those things, so throwing that out there before we begin. Uh, cool! Yay! So you guys all know me. I recognize a lot of you from my panel before. Does anybody else want to introduce yourselves or reintroduce yourselves or say some anime that you've been in or whatever? Else? Oh, yeah. Do it. I'm Anastasia Munoz, and this is my first con. Um, so so you great. Didn't know, great. Uh, I'm obsessed. I want to go to all the cons now. <laughs> all of them. Um, yeah, so I have been working for Funimation for about six years now, and I um, have been in various shows. Strike Witches, Jormungand, Dot Hack, Sacred Blacksmith. Just bought a deck of cards for Sacred Blacksmith. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Um, bitty, 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 uh, all the cool ones like Fairy Tale and um, Shangri La and. Well, many. Um, but what I do want to say about women in anime is I come from a theater background and Shakespeare is one of my, he's like my boy. Um, but it's really difficult because there aren't a lot of female roles in Shakespeare. Um, and so it's really challenging to have an opportunity to uh, explore those characters. What I love about being a voice actor, uh, voice actress, uh, is that there are so many roles, there's so many different things to explore and um, play, and like the roles are limitless, and that is what is amazing about being a voice actress, I think. And that is all. Caitlin. I'm Caitlin French. I am the second Caitlin. Uh, we can, how are we gonna break this down? Let me start asking Caitlin which question. Uh, Caitlin, you, Caitlin, you. Uh, Caitlin, 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 Caitlin French, Sarah, what? last name. Yeah. Yeah. French, Frenchy. Yeah. You can do that one. Um, anyways, uh, I primarily work with Sentai Filmworks. I've only been doing this for about three years now. Um, I have played Shiro in No Game No Life, Mei Tachibana in Say I Love You. Uh, Girls in Panzer, I play Hana Suzu, which is a really good female charge show that I really enjoy. Um, Leviathan, The Last Defense, and AKB 048, Bodacious Space Pirates, <laughs> so on and so forth. Bodacious Space Pirates. And it, the best part is that name, there's not a drop of fan service in that show. Wow. I know. <laughs> I'm cool. like, every time I say it, I get that look of like, you were doing what now? I'm like, no fan service. There's, it's not like it sounds yeah. at all. Audacious space pirates. Alright, very cool. So, that being said, you seem so chill. I know it's the heat in here. I'm so sorry. Um, questions relating to being a woman in anime. Alright, cool. We're going to go. Um, all of a sudden, it's been great. Back to her. You ever feel like. I guess it's more for characters, uh, when you have guys have to make like, it's going to sound awkward, but like grunting or yelling sounds that you feel awkward in the booth making those sounds. 
No. <laughs> no. I mean, maybe when I first started, it was weird to see these little descriptions that say, like, clenched teeth, upset, grunt. I'm like, what? But now I don't even think twice about it. I just, ah, 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 like shouting, it's great. It's cool. I still turn into, like, a dirty teenage boy whenever I have to run, because any running sounds is like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh man. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's my job, so I have no problem doing that. But like, I always wanted to think of that. <laughs> when you have to run. <laughs> I have to direct other people running. That's what I can think Yeah, it's really, and, and then like, everyone plays it really cool. Like, no one's giggling. I'm, I'm giggling to myself <laughs> when I ever have to run. <laughs> I know, it's so much <laughs> never found doing those extra sounds awkward, I guess. Uh, I mean, I go in, I do them. Uh, I sound more like a squeak toy sometimes, comparatively to <laughs> the dirty boy running. Uh, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of up there. But honestly, like, most of the time, at first it was kind of weird, but by the end of it, and now doing it, it's just, it's part of it. I think of anime as a different world, and they make all these extra sounds all the time. Yes. So that's just part of it. Yes. It's normal now. Absolutely. Hi, right, thank you. <laughs> right. What else you got for us? Right here. So, in a lot of anime, uh, a lot of weird things are fetishized, such as things like bathroom things like that, and like up shirts and okay. all kinds of things like that. How many, they put women in a lot of situations that give you, like, make you roll your eyes to the point where it's like, really, that's, you, that's what you're going for, where this is sexual, or people actually get off on this? Have, have you ever given uh, some kind of feedback to a director or been like, can, like, can we take this in a different area, or... Been, or felt uncomfortable by some of those things that where a lot of us would look like and go like, oh, thanks Japan, like, <laughs> Japan. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it, like, oh, Japan, because you kind of feel like, like you said, really, this is something that turns people on. It's totally either banal and mundane and everyday and stupid, like, like oh, waffles came out of the toaster, <laughs> you know, or, or it is kind of rather disgusting, and you're going, this doesn't need to be in my cartoon, thanks. Um, that happens all the time, and it's really kind of unfortunate, and if anything, I see it as kind of the, the dark, like, underbelly of this world that we live in. Because I feel like I come to cons, and everyone's so happy, so, everyone's so positive, and you know, maybe everybody has their own things that they enjoy, and that's like, if that's your personal right to have those things, but it's just weird to see these kind niches of that just I mean, like writ large or animated large for us to see they're like what who who likes that but I don't have the same thing because maybe somebody does uh, we're not really at liberty though as actors and this is a really good question because we can kind of talk about it as we go to make changes like that to say to the director I'm sorry I'm not comfortable doing this it's hard it's it's our I hate to say that it's our job, because I feel like as a human, I should have a right to say I shouldn't have to do that just because this is my job. Like, I know that this, everything else that my character experiences, that her, whatever her journey is, that's really what the story's about. And then there's this stupid scene with her and the toaster and some waffles. I'm like, I'm just Yeah, it's like, why? why? It's really frustrating. But I guess what's encouraging about it is that that you as a fan and other fans also recognize how silly it is and hopefully we're able to just kind of roll their eyes and like, ah, oh, Japan, let's get back to the story. I hope more people do that than, than not. Uh, I will say that, uh, yeah, some of those things, you're just like, whoa, uh, I had no idea. Cool. I, that's, fascinating and um, I will say this and I'm sure you've heard it before at cons or, or anytime you've spoken with voice actors but there are some things that I, and I don't know if you do this but so I use a different name sometimes when I'm working on a show that um, I don't necessarily want to credit my my personhood to um, because it is something that may be a little like 
against what I believe in, or, or, or if it's like super um, raunch fest. I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, and I um, do other things, and so I don't necessarily want that to be associated with me. Um, I will because take other the, people might take offense, not right. because you are so offended yourself. Exactly. I mean, I'm still doing it, and I'll, I'll still take the money, but um, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because because it's not me, right? And but that might be difficult to explain to an employer who's like this. Your name means a lot. You know, your name means a lot. You know that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, well, I'm not getting the waffles out of the toaster. Me personally. I mean, I'm just voicing that. Um, but so it's really important, and I, I know it's like hard, but I think it's great to explain that to y'all. Uh, as fans that like if you do recognize our voice and you're like oh, they're totally cheating us because they didn't use their real name know that the reason we do that is to protect ourselves it's not to like trick anyone or be malicious on that end or like screw with your brains it is really for us to protect our identity in that so we can keep working yeah so we can keep working outside of our Funimation life or our what do you Sentai? Sentai, yes. <laughs> I thought that was a question. <laughs> but yeah, that's a really great question, and it allowed us to speak to that, because I have oftentimes wanted to do that, because I've seen on forums or, or message boards that people are like, oh, I know who that is. She's, I can't believe she tried to trick us. <laughs> yeah, I, I got kind of upset with, uh, I won't name the site, say what it is, but I happen to be checking up on my credits on different places to see mm -hmm. are they lining up, are they crediting me correctly, and, um, I helped out a director with a show who was having a very hard time casting it because of the material. And I'm like, I will be in it if I don't have to do anything super nasty. So I'll just play one of the pretty normal girls um, and I will not use my name. He said, that would be great, thank you so much. So I did that, and even though my other name, which I won't tell you what it is, if you know it, good for you, um, is in the credits, they recognized my voice. Because it, it was just like my standard Caitlin voice for the character. Very recognizable, but I didn't care as long as it was credited uh, to me. And it is on the release itself, but this particular site recognized that as me and listed that show under my name, Caitlin Glass. So I wrote them and said, thank you for keeping track of everything that we do. Thank you for your site, it's really great. Would you mind removing this show from my name because that isn't me? In fact, it is a, that is a different, I use a different name for a reason. He wrote me back like a page long diatribe about how like actor, voice actors that use pseudonyms are lying to the fans. How dare we? Um, and I'm like, excuse me. If you are such a fan and you love us so much, why don't you legitimize our pseudonyms and give them their own pages? And you're like, here are the credits for whatever my fake name is, Waffle Girl. And then it could be like, if you love us and want us to keep working and you appreciate the work that we do, understand that this is something that we kind of have to do to protect ourselves and be like, so you're to, Waffle to Girl. To me, that makes sense. For Thank you. Especially for anybody who yeah, and I think all three of us actually have backgrounds in teaching where I know I work with pre-K kids. I haven't ever used a pseudonym yet. There's a few shows that have second seasons that I'm kind of like, I'm nervous because I did it and the shows get worse. Where it's like, oh, and you have to think about those realities of more parents know who I am now because fans start posting on my personal pages. And are they going to go Google my name? And what are they going to find? Especially because going back on, oh, Japan, uh, <laughs> I play a lot of 11-year-olds. And 11-year-olds in anime are not written like 11-year-olds actually are. Or <laughs> They're not <laughs> It's a hard 11. It's a hard 11. It's a hard 11 or a very, very odd 11. And things get interesting. interesting. There's a lot of complexes that are brought out that, as a, as a person, that's, that's not cool. I'm not into my bro. I don't have a brother, but I would be into him. But I, <laughs> this is my job. It's what I'm performing. It's what I'm doing. But a lot of people aren't great about being able to divorce an actor from their work. Yeah. And it creates a lot of great lines. So 
when people are telling you that you're not allowed to use that and do that, that, especially because I've seen a lot of people, not only tear people for pseudonyms, but they don't divorce actors from their work. They decide that they don't like someone and they tear them apart as an actor because they don't like him as a person. Yeah, or they don't like some character that they play. Yeah, they're like, or they, or they ruined it because one voice can completely back a show. Yeah. Oh, loaded question. You got us on a roll. Yeah. You better ask somebody else something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's okay. So, um, right in the corner there. So, uh, Kate with Glass, you direct. Do you, get yes. the, do you have the option of, of cutting scenes if you think they're too... I do not. Okay. I, that is not an option that I so, have whatsoever. So it's just a contract that comes down and says you got to just do this whole thing? Yes. And in fact, it's kind of tricky because like, I recently came back to Funimation as a director, but this time I'm not a contract. I'm an employee of the company. So when you're a contract director, you know, they could say, hey, can you work on this show? And if I had you know, done my research and I found something questionable that I didn't agree with or that I wasn't certain about, I could turn down the work. Uh, but now it's a different story. Like, I'm an employee, so they kind of give you, like, and here's the show you're working on next. And it doesn't mean that they're heartless and don't think about what I might be comfortable with or not be comfortable with. As, as Caitlin mentioned, a lot of shows, if they start out as mildly fan servicey, if there's a season two or if there's, God forbid, an OBA, oh, yes. um, <laughs> it's just like, hey, here they are with 50% less clothing and 100% more fan service. And so um, nobody wants to direct those. Like, nobody wants, and I feel Who's bad, especially, I'm the only, I'm one of the only female directors, then there are two others that are, like, assistant uh, directors um, now and again, and uh, they like, well, don't give those to them, but at the same time, it's not fair to say that some guy has to do it, too. How uncomfortable for a, a male director to have all these female actresses come in and be like, okay, well, on the scene, your boobs fall out, and you land on this guy, and then, you know, <laughs> 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 you know? No, we can't cut them out. What we're trying to do is, within the company, uh, be more vocal about how many of us are uncomfortable with that kind of work. And it's not to say that we are like prudes that don't like sex, that can't find this kind of stuff funny. Because that's not true. Like, I've, di I've just directed a show, um, I can't tell you where I am, sorry, that uh, has mild fan service in it. And sometimes when it would happen, I'd be like, that's totally hot. <laughs> why it exists, but to some degree when it's just like too much and you lose sight of what the show is even about, or if it's just dirty, if it's just, pardon my, like, the, they call, we call it fab material. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Pardon your mother, Caitlin. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, so, we're tired, huh? basically. Pardon my friends. Pardon my friends. Uh, <laughs> So we're, we're trying to get more vocal about letting folks know this isn't cool. We understand that when it's a, a season two or an OBA, yeah. we have some responsibility to dub it because of the original agreement <coughs> with the Japanese, but we're just hoping that less and less uh, those things will be licensed, or at least licensed for dubbing. Because like, I'm not saying they're awful, but I think people are going to buy shows like that, whether they're in English or not. So uh, it costs a lot of money to make a dub, so uh, let's spend that money elsewhere. That's what I think. <laughs> yes. Um, going again on the same subject, isn't it just like a little bit different from like actors per se? Because, I mean, you're not Cersei Lannister. You're just, it's your voice. It's not your body, your face, your... So I feel like it wouldn't be as bad if you were an actress, like, you know? So I'm sorry that I'm really talking, but I've been thinking about a lot of that exactly. Because now, as a director, I have to present to the people that I'm casting or maybe casting what the show is before I, I let them know. So I would like to use you in this role. Here's what the show is. Oh, but there's this scene there's this other scene. And that thought crossed my mind. I'm like, would it matter so much if it was like, so you're going to be on the show? It's called Game of Thrones, and uh, I don't watch it, but I do know that there's lots of nudity, there's lots of sex, there's lots of violence, and I, so many actors would be like, yes, I don't, yes, I'll be in that, sure. But we've become kind of like, oh, there's what? But in a lot of anime, there isn't even full nudity. It's like, just, it's not. It's like bathing suits or ridiculously tight clothes, or, um, but we're still so uncomfortable with it. So I don't know what it is uh, about it. 
so I don't really have any answers of stuff to say. I kind of thinking on that. You go first. Yeah. Um, I think because again, I come from the theater world, and I think that as long as the content, like when I when I'm fully present as an actor um, with my body and my face and my voice. Um, if the content serves it, then then I feel like it is worthy of it. You know what I mean? Like if, if a nude scene is relevant for the show, then then that's fine. If it's there because it's gratuitous and is just overkill, then maybe I don't necessarily agree with that and would probably not agree. So I'll oftentimes in our anime life, I'm like, this is a little gratuitous. <laughs> um, you know, so I think that that's kind of the difference is sometimes it really is effective and it really works. Um, Game of Thrones, for example, um, it's it's very graphic, it's very visceral, it's very sensory, and I, that's where they want to take it. And the story is good and it serves the plot, I feel, and it's you're probably getting a lot of money here on that show too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to bring it back to that, but um, yeah, I, th that's my take on that question. Um, to add another bit on that, uh, when you're an actor, Ty, <laughs> you're covering his ears. Yeah, you're here. Uh, so one of the big differences, for me at least, when I'm on stage versus when I'm in the booth, is as an actor on stage, you've had a lot of time with these characters, you've been rehearsing, you have a state. For me, there's a state of mind I get into where there's just the theater world, there's what's on the stage, and we're going, and what happens, happens. In the booth, you're still more of yourself than you are the character that you're playing, I find, because a lot of people, especially with a lot of the broadcast stuff, you're probably seeing it, the character, for like the first or second time, and you're not really familiar with them, you're going. So you get into this point where it's more like you're faking an orgasm and faking an orgasm and public's kind of awkward in the first place as opposed to, hey, I've been on stage, this is the part, we've rehearsed it, we got it down, it we can go with it. Yeah, it's part of, yeah, the, it's part of the thing. Instead of, stop, okay, now you're going to fake an orgasm for me. Beep, 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 fake it now. Okay? You're really good friends, you're just sitting, like, you know, on the other right? side of the door, like, what is my life? <laughs> <laughs> he cannot give me enough money to do this right now. Yeah. Do you feel the air coming on? Yes. Yay! Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's right here. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, so favorite female role we've played or one that we just like. Anybody who wants to go first, because this may require some thought. Thought. Thinking. Got it. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be Coco in Your Gun. Hands down. She is so great. It was it's my one and only lead. I talk about her all the time, but um, I was honored to play her because she, first of all, dresses modestly which I like. Second of all, she is a boss. She is a bad A, B, all right? And she has a troop of assassins behind her that are mostly men, and she's like, yeah, CIA, what? I've got sniper rifles pointed right at you. Go ahead, go ahead. F with me today. I would like that. Um, so I love, I love her so much. I think she's powerful. I think that she is sexy and a boss. And uh, if you haven't seen it, you better. <laughs> you should. Um, the one I played, but I'm gonna kind of go with the badass theme. My favorite little badass I played. Her name is Anuchio. She's from the Ambition of Oda Nobuna, and she is this pint size, drawn like a lolly, spear wielder, who is an absolute boss the entire show, who's pulling everything on track. She gets everything done, and even when they think the main character's dead, who they've lost, she pulls everybody else together, puts them in line, and says, we have to keep going. And she's, she's one of my favorites for that. She doesn't talk a lot, 
but she's awesome. I'm also a huge uh, Sengoku period uh, fan, so getting to play a member of the Maida clan, Toshi and Maida, was really exciting. Um, but my favorite female character, generally of all time, would have to be Sailor Jupiter. Uh, I know, because I really, I love me some Sailor Jupiter. I really love girls who embrace all sides. So a girl who's tough, who fights, but she can do something like cooking. I think it's one of the best to show women are well-rounded. There's not just one place that we should be in our hobbies. We are all over the spectrum, just like everybody else. So I thought she was always one of my heroes growing up. Uh, plants are pretty up rad females, so I would be remiss if I did not mention this one. Yeah! I think that she is incredible, and um, I love how she is comfortable in who she is and doesn't really care what other people think about her. Maybe to some tiny degree. She has goals and things that she wants to achieve, but she doesn't seem uh, limited or held back by the fact that she's a woman uh, at all. Uh, she's like, well, this is what my mom did, it's what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. And uh, to her, it, the, it's so weird. I feel like the mom is very much ahead of its time, and it's sort of uh, blurring the lines between genders, and it doesn't really matter. But I, I don't know, there, can we close that? However, here's a hot tip um, that I just learned about recently when I went to work on an audiobook. Um, they were like, we're getting a lot of mouth noise. And I was like, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, my mouth noise. Um, <laughs> because you can't help it, you know, like, what, if you have excess or not enough, like, what's happening in your mouth that's picking up on a microphone. And it was just, like, so quiet in there. And I could just feel, like, my mouth opening. And <laughs> I could hear my mouth opening. And I'm like, oh, what's the embarrassed? Um, but they told me to eat an apple. Green apple. Green apple. Green apple's the pectin. Yeah, it helps, it helps, like, get the saliva and, like, just lubricates the whole, the whole thing up. And so have a green apple if yeah. you... I feel like you have mouth noise. Caffeine. Caffeine is, is a dehydrator, actually. So then, like, if your mouth is dehydrated, then, like, extra saliva gets produced to compensate. So it gets really smacky. Call it a little noisy in there. Uh, avoid dairy. Uh, so don't eat, don't drink uh, milk or have cereal for breakfast before a session. Don't have 
coffee, which is hard. We do it anyway, so yeah. we're like, I have to, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> drinking coffee and like water and swishing. Um, uh, potato chips will do the same as a uh, green apple. Oh, yeah. Oh, even better. Yeah, it is better. <laughs> I mean, green apples are better for you, but after a while, like, I can't eat green apples anymore <laughs> because of the food. Like, I see one and I'm like, oh, God, give it away. <laughs> uh, on Street Fighter, uh, early on, we don't have to do anymore because technology's gotten better and there are better filters for cleaning out those sounds automatically. Yeah. Instead of an engineer having to like zoom in on the wave file and like with a the pencil tool like draw out uh, the mistakes and cut out the smacks. Anyway, uh, I started biting the apple, chewing it to get the effect, and like spitting it out because I could not. I'm like I can't eat it. I just no more apple. I plug my nose so I have to taste it. Yeah, weird, right? Well, that's your sweet heart. Potato chips. <laughs> chips. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So what is the proportion of men to women? adults to kids in this kind of, this industry. There's a lot more women in this industry because there's a lot more female in anime, honestly, I feel like. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that it kind of goes in waves around the studio we're experiencing. You'll get, for example, my first show back that I still can't tell you about, she's in it, all girls. So when I had auditions, it was all women. There were like two male characters in the whole show. Uh, now my current show, there are some females, but it's mostly males. So I just listen to male actors for like three days straight. Um, it's it's weird that there are harem shows where there are two or three guys and tons of girls. What about production in the Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's so way, industrial. Yeah. I'm putting that in the show. So no. It's male heavy. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like a generic. Yeah. 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 The, like she said, the majority of the directors are males at, at Funimation, we'll speak to. And then um, only recently, since in the time that I've been there, there's only one female yeah, engineer, one female engineer. right now. Um, and then on the other side of the building, <laughs> we, have, we have the recording side with the, the artists and such, and then on the other side, we have a different kind of artist over there working to like promote and Know, relations and all, all the stuff and I yeah and I don't we don't see them often <laughs> they're on the other side of the building but I think it might be pretty balanced over there yeah it feels that way um, but like I said in 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 acting world in general I just feel like like all, on a whole there's a lot of actresses there's a lot of girls that want to and women that want to work and a lot of the times in theater and stuff there's not enough roles in anime there are more and that's great um and then as far as kids and versus adults to answer that question we do have a few young people that come in and record um and that's typically based on um a relationship that they that their family has or that they have with a director for the most part that's like hey, you know, you'd be really great. Or sometimes it's like our voice actors' kids that come in. But oftentimes, we have the adult talent base to make little kid. That's voices. my job. I just, <laughs> yeah, so unlike in, in Freelay American cartoons where it's kind of uh, the norm or even a fad currently to have actual kids playing kids, which is pretty awesome, and I love to hear it. Um, but the trouble with it is, in anime, the themes are often a lot stronger. So um, unless the, the kid uh, desires to be an actor for life, and they can kind of go, all right, this is some heavy stuff you're about to get into, it may not be appropriate. Maybe mom and dad don't want them working on uh, that kind of stuff. And also, the schedule. Kids need to be in school. Uh, you know, so unless you're a Hollywood kid that has a tutor, and that's your job is to go to auditions and um, go to voice acting classes and workshops and then maybe you get to be in a cartoon for as long as your voice sounds like that. It's not going to last, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's the other thing. Like, we never know, like maybe you end up, like Aaron Disney was 12 when he was cast as Al in Full Metal Alchemist. Well, it worked for the first run of Alchemist, but his voice did start changing near the end of it. Yeah. So a couple of years later, like the movie comes around, um, he still is Al for the movie, but then uh, Brotherhood, and right before Brotherhood, the OVAs that, they weren't really OVAs, they were these cute little films that were up at like the Full Metal Alchemist, 
Universal Studios type experience, short little things. His voice had completely changed. Um, and so they, they actually pulled the stuff. They found lines from the show that would fit within the context of the moments they were in and pulled them. Because we hadn't found Maxie Whitehead yet, uh, who's a fabulous actress who replaced uh, Aaron in season two. So um, that's the other thing. You never know how long is a show going to run. You can't cast a kid because what's going to happen to them? You know, mom and dad get new jobs. They move to Wisconsin. You know? <laughs> like, ugh. All right. I'm really long winded. Tell me, Shelly. Yes, me. Mm -hmm. Me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what, when did you decide to make a career in voice acting? The day I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I wouldn't say that I have a full-blown voice acting career, unfortunately. I wish. I would love that. Um, but I'm very happy to add it and have it be a part of my um, hodgepodge collage of my career. Um, it is a wonderful, fun, exciting world to be a part of and now that i know that what con life is like what <laughs> um now it's going to be my full-blown career cons are going to be my full-blown <laughs> career um, but uh yeah the first time i you know got to go into a booth the first time i like booked a character i mean i was hooked you didn't you have to tell me twice um it was amazing but the i think the first time i wanted to be an actor um, when I was very young, they would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I had a laundry list of things. I was like, and almost every scientist wanted to be every scientist. And I wanted to be a teacher, and I wanted to be a ballet choreographer, and I wanted to do all these things, and a doctor, and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I realized also pretty early, like, oh, if I'm an actor, I might just be able to do all those jobs <laughs> on TV <laughs> or in a play. So that's kind of how I got started. Well, so I started out, I, I went into acting because I really never grew out of playing pretend, I guess, if you want to say, put it that way. I always enjoyed dressing up in costumes, playing in fantasy worlds, and pretty much the stage was doing that professionally, and it was a really nice outlet for me when I was younger, uh, especially when I got into improv. Um, one of the big troubles for me with theater though is I'm really short and as I would always end up playing the little boy which it worked until I got assets and then finding became a thing and then I bruised my ribs and decided we couldn't do that again um, so I went to school to do theater and I did some communications with like radio and stuff like that because I was interested in doing uh, advertisements for radio, being a DJ, just something that inspired a lot of personality along with theater because by, admittedly by the end of college I was really, really discouraged with theater because I was kind of told pretty much that my body type I would never get to be the lead role. I could never be who I wanted to be on stage because I was born too short and I wasn't pretty enough. So, uh, improv was kind of a thing for me afterwards that helped me do anything. Anything improv was actually like one of the biggest confidence booster I found, and it was a release. And through that is how I met Chris. I've always been interested in voice acting, but I really never, I always wanted to do it, but I really never thought I'd be in the right place, right time to be that person who got to do it and then it happened. So it was always been in the back of my mind because I could always, my voice is not quite fitting of my body. Again, I have like a 12 year old voice, but I can't play 12 year old on stage for any reason. So for me, <laughs> uh, but yeah, for me it kind of, it was always kind of a dream to do so. And, but I never thought I'd be in the right place, right time to do so. So I never actively pursued after it. It kind of came to me. 
but I'd always wanted to act or do something where I got to have that energy, go into other worlds, and bring things to life for people because that's just what I wanted to do. Like I really wanted to do puppetry for a really long time, but puppetry is not really popular anymore because I loved la I loved labyrinth and I loved dark crystal and I loved intense yeah. puppetry. I find that ah oh, they're amazing, but again that was. Where do you find that nowadays? <laughs> so, I ended up in voice acting eventually, and yeah, it's kind of a nice fit. Um, I don't know, like these ladies, that I ever decided this is the one part of acting that I'm going to pursue. I think that's kind of detrimental to your career, to say I'm only going to do one type mm -hmm. of a thing. Um, I was, as I mentioned in an earlier panel, I was almost done with school and getting my degree in theater, and it was my plan at that time to go to graduate school when I wanted to go abroad, and I wanted to study the classics. So I wanted to be a classical stage actor. I said that, I'm like, don't narrow your things down, but I, that's what I wanted to specify in, just because that's what I loved. And uh, uh, my theater program was kind of like, they would touch upon that stuff, but they really felt that as an undergraduate program, it was better served to kind of hit a little bit of everything. And if you're mainly interested in, you know, Shakespeare, et cetera, then go focus on that um, for graduate studies. Made sense to me. So I was like, I'm going to go to England and go be Shakespearean, and it's going to be rad. Um, but then uh, I started voice acting before I even graduated and found, well, I really love this, and I realized that it's a hard thing to get into, and I probably should keep at it. Um, and so I did, and here I still am. Um, <laughs> And so I haven't decided that this is the only kind of acting I'm going to do. It just kind of has turned out that way. And, uh, and I'm okay with it. Though I do want to get back on the stage for real. But it's just tough. It's hard. I mean, you cons a lot. <laughs> okay, all right. Who else? Who else got a question? Uh, right back here. Uh, um, how, how is the anime industry and fandom and uh, its relationship with women uh, changed over the course of your career? My career is really short, so I can't give a spectrum, a spectrum of that. <laughs> so I'm going to shove it over there. Um, my career, too, is pretty short, but um, I will say I didn't know anything about this world before I, came, before I was shoved into it. Um, and I felt like this door opened to this whole other world that I had no idea was existing and I am fascinated by it. I am like in constant wonder and awe of it. Um, being involved in it, getting getting to be a part of it, but then to come and see all of you wonderful humans who um, are so creative and so kind and like to me that's awesome and I'm like Y'all don't even know me, and you came to my panel, and you, you know, like my fan page, and I have a Wikipedia page. My actor friends are soups gels that I <laughs> have a Wikipedia page that I didn't even make. I'm like, you know, it's no big deal. My fans made it, okay? So, uh, <laughs> to me, like, that, that is something I never anticipated having. I never knew that this would be my ticket to fame. <laughs> um, but so it, to me, it hasn't changed. It's just opened more and more and more. And I really love it. I've, I've yet to come across someone who has been truly hateful to me or, um, you know, disrespectful. I, I've seen a few things online that, you know, I had to dig for, but they're like, eh, she, eh, she's all right. And I'm like, Oh, really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and I totally value people's critical opinions, and I am trained to do so because of being an actor. Uh, my very first critical review I got in a newspaper for a play, my first professional play, they ripped me to shreds. And I was like, okay, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to put it in my scrapbook because you can only go up from here. <laughs> the industry change based on a couple of factors uh, the global economy kind of tanking for a while being one of them 
Uh, I've seen major studios close in Japan that I never thought I'd see close, you know, stuff like that. And there's a time where the industry, I think it still kind of is hurting, and we don't recognize it as much here, but, um, so a lot of what they were putting out would be like sure things uh, for them, which is often the fan service type stuff. So for a while, it's like all that was coming down the pike, and we we're all so sick of it. Uh, and now it's kind of a renaissance, some really great shows are coming back and uh, coming around, and that's a good thing. Uh, anybody who hasn't asked one? Oh, you were next, yes. What was one of your favorite like scenes or characters? Favorite scenes? Wow. Coco, at one point, like she's she's been, um, and of course you know, so we're watching it as it's going, okay, and so the whole time she's been really like, on it, divvying out orders, blah 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 blah, and then at one point she throws herself out of the conference table when she's having a business meeting. She throws herself on the conference table and just starts rolling around in frustration, and I was like, what? is exactly what I want to do. And, he, and my director was like, yeah, when I saw this, I thought of you. <laughs> she really liked that. She like just throws a little hissy fit on the table. And so that was really fun. Um, that was really fun. And then of course she has a few sequences where like she's in a negotiation with someone. And she just locks it down. And I'm like, I need to say what now? And then pull a trigger. What? <laughs> or actually, I very rarely, Coco very rarely pulls the trigger. She has someone else do it for her. <laughs> my, oh, my turn. Uh, it's actually the opening scene for a show called Bio Cheeky. And I play this character called Kurenha Sakamachi. She's very energetic, which is something I never get to be. And she decides she's going to wake her brother up by butt slamming on his back and start putting him in various wrestling moves by screaming them out in a ridiculous fashion <laughs> until her brother lays bleeding on the bed and she just dusts her hands off and is like, my job's done. <laughs> and that's how she is the entire show. And it was my favorite night ever to start a recording session because I just got to, I just got to sit there and be like, I'm going to throw you in a sharpshooter. And it was a lot of fun. I don't get to do that often. So for me, and just in general, that character is so lively and energetic like that. It was really fun for me to get to put that out there as well. <laughs> God, one, one scene that I just really liked it's so hard. There are, there are tons. Like, it's all of Oron as a scene. That's what I'm talking That's super hard, you guys. Uh, I guess I'll mention from Yormagon also, just because she's talking about it so much, so it makes me think about it. Uh, I play a crazy person <laughs> in that show uh, that I love. I love it, that Bevan's thought of me as that crazy person with a cockney accent and a knife, or three, or five. Um, she's bonkers. And uh, I just love all of her scenes, so I can't really think of one in particular. Uh, she has this fight, though, with a, a character that she kind of has a girl crush on named Valmet, played by, um, by Carly Mosier. And she's like the real deal as far as being awesome, and I'm just like crazy. I have too much crazy energy, too much anger to really get my skills together. I'm more interested in impressing people uh, with them. And I can totally kill someone for sure, but like uh, Carly is really awesome. So we have this big fight scene where she beats the crap out of me as, as far as skills are concerned, and then afterwards we have a big kind of, I don't know, girl talk or something. <laughs> Uh, but it's just fun. Like using that that dialect is fun. Because normally when I play Brit, it's like um, a little standard like received pronunciation, like beautiful sounding BBC English uh, type stuff. And and Nildo's just like a, like a dirty trashy Londoner. And, uh, <laughs> so fun. <laughs> so it's not really seen. It's just everything she says ever. Uh, 
<laughs> what else we got? What else we got for us? We have like probably one last question, unless they're quick, like lightning round. Yeah. Uh, what are your opinions on the abundance of character archetype female characters? Where to the point how it feels like many of the female characters are actually like they didn't take the mold of an archetype, such as like how many like modern slice of life or comedy anime. It feels like it always has to be like a secondary character or like a cute, shy, and Dande character also. Um, I feel like it plays into what you were talking about earlier, that it's the surefire thing. It's a formula that Japan knows works, and they give it out there because they want the surefire thing to sell. You have these characters in these standard molds, this is what works, here you go. And I think people have gotten used to writing in that formula because it's yeah, it's also part of, like, you recognize it not just in anime, but if you stop and think about it, you're going to see it in any sitcom that you see, any, like, major blockbuster film that you see, uh, kind of like the way they're like, we have to uh, recognize every ethnicity, so the, the, the white guy it happens to be the lead, but he has a, an African-American friend, he's got an Asian friend, a Mexican friend, uh, like, so that uh, no one is offended and everybody feels they have someone they can relate to. <laughs> um, and I think that's kind of what they do with anime, in, in a way. Um, when you think about you and your group of friends, it's possible that you guys are all really similar. That wouldn't make for very good entertainment. Like, let's watch a show about five people that are all the same. You know, maybe one doesn't like uh, bell peppers on their pizza, and that's the difference. That's not. That's not entertainment. You gotta have something that everyone in your audience can find. I'm that girl, or I like that kind of boy, and that's just how they do it. Yeah, and I'll say too that I, as an actor, I love it because <laughs> because you you find your type and then you work you know what i mean like it's it, sometimes it sucks like i may not ever i very rarely will i get to play a, a lead girl because most of the time they're a girl and da, 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 da. i play her mother i play her teacher i play her commander and to me i am absolutely fine with that i know where what my type is and i and i know that they're going to write that type and then i might get to be that type and that's fine with me my same. i might get more hours as the lead same thing, same thing. And so, another reason why Coco's so great. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one more? We'll just do it until it hits out back up. Have you done anything uh, embarrassing while recording? <laughs> I was very embarrassed by my mouth noises. <laughs> it was very embarrassed. Uh, sure, it happens all the time. I mean, Especially if you're at the studio like all day, it happens to have an all day session. You have lunch in the middle of things, you know, you're digesting in the booth the next time you record. You follow me? Okay. Sad. Yeah. We're humans. And that here, you can go for hours saying, nailing every line, and then you find one word for some reason you can't say it right, and it'll be like a contraction. Or it's some Japanese name that for some reason in the booth you just cannot get it right unless, for me personally, I have to have some Japanese names phonetically spelled out because I'll just go. Oh, yeah. Where I'm just like, and I've been doing great for hours, and then apparently, blah, happens. <laughs> and it gets really embarrassing. It's like, I swear I'm mad. I'm sorry. I talk for a living. <laughs> um, I think we have to go. Yes. I know, this has been really fun, you guys. But yeah, y'all are awesome.